It is an exciting day here at the Woodyard. I have a visitor. He may look familiar to you. <laughs> Everyone, this is Bob Nelson with Metza Machines out of Merrill, Wisconsin. How's it going, guys? Bob, tell the world hello. Hello, world. <laughs> so, Bob, you are just passing through. You're out delivering yappas. Right. You have one on your truck. We'll yep. walk over there in a little bit. Yep. And that's one of the benefits with this yard. We're right off, inter we're really, we're right between Interstate 90 and Interstate 80. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. Right off the highway. And he just put it into his day to stop by. Yeah. Uh, he has uh, got a new accessory. Yes, sir. He wants to demonstrate on the, on the 405. There's a couple repairs. Uh, I was responsible for um, kind of breaking something and that uh, made my pocketbook a little bit lighter. And Bob is also out here. He's wanting to fix the live deck. Bob, you were out here for my open house. Yep. There was something you found highly annoying yes. about uh, the live deck. Can yeah. you explain that? Yeah, so in running this, now this is one of the first 471s I think that we had in um, in, in the US market. And uh, we set this as wide as we could go so that we could get the longest logs onto it. but. At the time, um, they didn't have any other thing to lock this in place here. So this ended up getting slopped out over time. Well, now each chain kind of goes independent of each other, and it tries to put logs oh. diagonal onto the hourglass rollers. So it is really annoying. And the, the new ones have this already fixed because they use set bolts now. Yeah, I've um, seen them. So, so that's not an issue. But what we're going to do today is, for your purpose, we're going to pound that straight. We're going to heat it up, pound it straight, and then we're going to weld it just so that it's solid. Okay. And so that everything is true again. What I had noticed, and a couple of our Eagle Eye viewers, by the way, uh, Bob's uh, employee Ken is here. <laughs> hey, Ken. Hey. A nice view through the 405. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So the diesel engine, the air intake is right here, right where the exhaust for the sawdust, the chips come out, and they shoot nicely into this tote, guys. It works great. However, sometimes it gets a little full and sometimes um, the uh, dust and all can get sucked up. Because yeah. I had pulled out the air filter and it was kind of dirty. I was kind of surprised. Okay. So Bob proposed. He has a Yappa uh, sawdust extractor. Yeah. It runs off the hydraulic yep. pump of the 405 and it has a longer tube and it takes the sawdust farther away from the machine so I can still use my totes which these are all from the IBC totes I just cut the tops off of them yeah and uh, so we're gonna get that installed and see how and see how that goes the other problem was my fault <laughs> and I um, messed up the the infeed belt um, so these are adjustable and they adjust at the tail end. And I was not paying attention to this, but the it was running off centered and it was starting to fray this edge. So that got pulled out. And when the belt was coming underneath, it got hooked onto something and it peeled a, yeah. a two inch section off of it until I figured out what was going on. So I stopped it and I got a, a, a razor and I cut it off on an angle so that it wouldn't um, keep peeling, you yeah, know, because as it keeps. So it's been fine like this, but I, I thought, you know, you're coming out here. I needed to get this fixed. So I, I went ahead and purchased a new uh, belt, and Bob has offered to put this on. This isn't part of your yeah, regular service. It's, it just It's not, but also we're going to use this as an opportunity to show you um, kind of an easier way to cheat and put the new belt on, because if you look at this, it looks... It looks really like it's going to be a huge pain in the butt, uh -huh. uh, but I I have a thought on changing it to uh, cheat, and shortcuts didn't work last night. I don't want to talk about that, but <laughs> uh, we're going to try that today <laughs> with changing this belt out. And then, Bob, we have, this is just a wear item, I guess. Yes, yeah. This yeah. rubber flap. Yep, this one is, and so is this one, and uh, basically this kind of acts as a squeegee every time the conveyor you know the wood blocks go past it it's getting hit so um and it's also it's prone to wear out it, all of this stuff which would have otherwise taken a ride up the belt into the cleaner falls onto the ground yeah and i have to just make note 
the tarp. Yeah. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah, it out, has made things a lot in. easier. Yeah. Yeah, I just uh, pull it out and then dump it. I have done... This new yard is so clean. <laughs> Sorry, I... Can you repeat that, please? Yeah, the new yard is very clean <laughs> and organized. Yeah. The, the new yard is so clean and organized, it would be nice if you could see the nice firewood. But instead, you just look at all the work that's ahead of you. Yeah, that is a lot of work. You turn around it. <laughs> yeah, I had being a sole proprietor. You know, there's only some. There's only so much you can do. Yeah. But then I don't know, guys. I'm not the most disciplined person in the world. I work though. Let's. You know, we like to joke about this. I obviously am taking care of business here, but there's just some things I just don't feel like doing, and. I had to prioritize at the old yard, and that's when you had showed up. You were like, Joe, this place looks like a train wreck. <laughs> and that's not normally how I live. So I have proven you what I yeah, my, my true is, operation is here. This this, is awesome. this place is pretty clean well, considering you, yeah. how much wood I've made here. And yeah. it shows you how much a little bit of extra space can help you oh, yeah. with your business too. No kidding. And organization. I mean it's this is this is Yeah. This is nice. All right, so Bob you are um you got a lot of other things you, you yeah have you got done this to trip he's put me to work i am going to now do what i do best and that's stay out of the way and point you have the chair in the book i got a chair and i got a book okay. so i got a canopy i'm ready to go here we go That I'm having flashbacks to Lost in Space with robots. That looks like <laughs> looks like robots' arms. Warning! Warning! I don't even know what you're talking about, but I can see how it would be a robot's arms. Yeah. Well, you had to grow up in the in the uh, '60s and '70s, I guess. Lost in Space was a great TV show. <laughs> okay. I'll take your word. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Give me a thumbs up, everyone, if you're a fan of <laughs> if you're a fan of Lost in Space. So this is the sawdust extractor. It is in the box. Yes, sir. All right. Come on out. Look at that thing. And that is going to... This is going to suck up the dust. All right. Put it where you want. And it doesn't... And it, it runs off a of hydraulic power. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm excited to see how it works. So this is a 365 Pro Plus... Uh, it does not have the axle, so this one just sits. There's no platform for it. 14-foot conveyor. Someone is going to be a happy camper when this gets delivered. Great machine. So, Bob, what are you doing here? This is this is where the extractor is going to sit, just right there? Yes, sir. Okay. And I have the piece that bolts onto here. Yeah, so the holes will go straight down into this. All right. And then uh, if we want to put wherever it's going to exit into uh, this hose, we could run quite a ways. If you're going to put it into like a uh, um, something that is like completely sealed, uh -huh. you want to put one of those vortex things on the top of it. Otherwise, it's just going to try to inflate it and then your sawdust flow. I'm with you. Good. Yeah. But I can fill up an open container like this, though. It's not going to shoot it out all over the place. Yeah, that, that's perfect. And so check this out. Here are... These are the two main connections for that sawdust extractor uh -huh. and your uh, perfect, let's see, the perfect clean conveyor motor is down there with quick connectors on it. Yeah. So we'll run this in line with those. And then we've got the, the case drain, they call it. This will get teed in either with this motor or we can go further to the conveyor motor. Oh, wow. Okay. So okay. This one, there's, there's no real flow on out of this. It just kind of drips out of here. Um, more of a protection for the motor but okay but yeah that's um it's relatively simple and straightforward. yeah and i think it will also because you know we do get stuff that blows around yeah. so that should keep that it's going to be more of a vacuum yeah uh-huh so the All right. thing is like you'll have to still make sure that you keep keep it like if you get chunks of stuff yeah this thing will eat some of them and, and kind of chip them up too okay but if you do get something kind of sideways in here you know that's the only problem where you, you know, yeah, that can off. happen. I get like a stick or a branch or something in there. Yep, but then you can just take this off and kind of shake the hose, and it'll fall in there. And all right, back to work. I like it, Bob. Do you think before you leave too? You think you can maybe adjust this belt? It's a little bit off center too. 
I'm a little gun shy now after what I did to the old one. It's like, I don't know what it is with me. My brain does not allow myself to figure out how this thing works. <laughs> I just can't, I can't physically do it. But this is what went wrong on mine. So it starts to walk to the side. Yeah, the other one, it went off center and it caught, it yanked this out. So this one was flapping Yep. and it got hooked on something and it just tore this straight down. Just like fabric. Oh, real unfortunate. I uh, I felt bad calling you up about that. <laughs> I hate breaking stuff, but hey. hey. Things happen. Like you said, they're, they're machines that are doing work every day. Yeah. If, um... Machines break and you fix them. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right, Bob, so this is just going to slide over that adapter. Yep. Clamped on. Um, yeah, you don't have to necessarily clamp this on, you can. Um, I'll probably put this clamp on and then leave it just a little bit snug, and then that way, if you do ever get like weird piece of bark or here, something in here, you know, you can just come back here and slide it off and get okay. it out. Um, <clears throat> important thing to note with these extractors is that um, they come with a large section of hose, but what yeah. you don't want, is you don't want this to like go to the ground, and then come back up ah. because now we got to go that whole loop. So right. we're going to end up cutting this pretty close to pretty close to about here. Okay. And we'll leave this excess here in case you ever do get a hole poked in it. All right. You can easily just replace it. And this stuff's pretty durable though, huh? Yeah, it is. Uh, we used the one out in our yard for at least two years and never had any um, adverse. All adverse right. to And then the use. the extractor is weather. It's hardy. Yes. I yes, can sir. leave this out oh, in yeah. the weather. Yep, absolutely. And um, then we'll put on the big hose that'll go there and uh, wherever you want it to end up. And that can lay, around, lay along the ground and then um, do a loop up. It just got enough power to, okay. to do that. But I, I I wouldn't leave it like, you know, in the bottom of here. Yeah. If there's a way we can, you know, droop it over here or let it sit here. Mm -hmm. sure Maybe we can even with, cut like a, you know, a notch honestly, in this. What about your IBC? Well, you probably don't want to do one with a... Yeah, it'd be too hard to empty. What, yeah, what if you had the lid for one of these still? I do. Where you could put that on and have and then and then just set the lid aside when you have to go empty this yeah i like That's it thought, you know yep all right okay bob so what are you doing now okay now i'm talking taking off the bar and chain and this washer yeah um i think i sent to you like a year ago that looks really familiar bob <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna lie so, the washer just acts as a protector for uh the chain if the, if the chain ever ran so loose that um as you recall it threw it the one time and it cut off your bar oil line. Yes. So, and that prevents that from happening. Exactly. I remember when that happened, I called you up and you said, uh, does it have that washer on it? And I says, no. And you said, well, I'll send it to you, but get it put on right away. <laughs> and that was about a year ago. Hey, things happen. <laughs> we lose track of things, you know? Yeah. We have been using a lot of this stuff. The wasps love the 471 timber deck. It stays like today though, guys. It really makes me appreciate everything that has happened here at Ohio Woodburner and developing this relationship with Metsa Machines. And even though I am a YouTube channel, and now, you know, there is that kind of relationship between uh, Ohio Woodburner and Metsa Machines. These are still the things that I know with good relationships and knowing how Bob operates that even if I was not a YouTube channel, um, this is something that probably would have happened where he is passing by and he has an opportunity to stop and check in on one of his machines that are out there. The dealer plays a huge role, guys, and I have said that on a number of occasions. 
And I have always said the first barometer, the first indicator of if you are looking to buy something is did they answer their phone or did they return your message? If you have to chase someone down when you're trying to buy their machine, imagine how that's going to be when you need them when it's broken down, you know? Uh, but I can't speak enough about Metsa Machines and Bob and his team, A+. Plus. All right, Bob, the welding is done. Now we're turning our attention to this in-feed belt yep. that I broke. If you've seen better days. Yeah, so you're going to remove this how? Yeah, so from the factory, the they just use this uh, piece of wire to hold these alligator things together, and yeah. then they typically crimp the end here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this end off here, hopefully so that we can get a nice clean break. Yeah. Well, that might not work. Okay, all right, and then I'm going to pull it out here. Think that's gonna work? Look at that. Okay, and now this is I'm gonna try something that we've never done before. Uh-huh. Okay. So it may not work, it may work. I don't know. Let's I know see. what you're gonna do. I know you know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I've seen this done before. Have you? Yeah. Scheib and I did this on the on the uh, axis when we put the new outfeed chain on it. Okay. I didn't watch that video, Joe. Are you upset? <laughs> you only watch the Yappa ones. I try to. Most of the time, man, it's been, we've been busy, you know? Yeah. Okay, so, now this is just, you know, temporary. Uh -huh. But this is the new wire that came with the new infeed belt. Okay, so you've just uh, ran that wire in. Now we're going to probably start the engine up and infeed. Oh, you can just do it manually. Yeah. And hey, there's the other side. That's I didn't think I'd sign. see you again. Well, it was a little bit of screwing around. That's an interesting way of keeping that because that's really just, it looks like um, yeah, it's a clothesline like or something, you know? Cable. So you're going to crimp it. You know, you don't crimp the, crimp the cable, you crimp the... The alligator clip. Okay. Yep, and then I'll just hit the... Do that and it's locked in there huh and we'll do it on this one too we're done so now this can still hinge the way it needs to okay and now we will um, now you got to adjust it yep so we'll get this kind of tensioned up and then we'll start the machine and we will uh, uh, run a couple of revolutions of the infeed belt and we will adjust it here all right Bob so we have to fine-tune and we all agree it looks good here but at the front it's kind of tracking towards the engine it needs to come this way yeah. on the far end yep so that's an adjustment right yep exactly. all right well let's do that then all right so we have to make an adjustment on the front end yep you can see it's a little off we got a lot of barrel on this side yeah. and minimal on that side so we're going to avoid you know getting this belt Freed. Grinding, uh, grinding onto there. So yeah. this whole drum and uh, infeed motor assembly hinges on this bolt back here. Uh huh. And then there's these two bolts here that lock it. So, so you have to take the panel off. So Ken took the four bolts out. All right. And then you just got to be. Take the wire off of the, the gauge. Yep. This is exciting here, guys. Look at this. <laughs> so yeah, if you look under here, you'll be able to see right here is that set bolt is the set bolt yep so that's a 13, right at it. 13 mil so we're gonna we're gonna loosen this nut and then we're gonna back this bolt out a little bit uh-huh and then we'll probably have to tap on the end of that to bring it this way sure so we have adjusted the front but now it looks like it maybe came over a little bit too much we got i'm looking at the drum underneath you can see it on this side and this side is totally gone so we got to bring the adjuster this way a little bit yep get this tracking and then we'll tighten it up on the tail end well there's definitely been a difference I can't see the drum peeking out on this side and just a little bit on this side so now we're gonna double check the end run all right because what we do down there will affect this as well so we're on the tail end now and Ken is going to fine-tune this 
what's tracking a lot more on this side than this side. I see a lot of white drum here that you don't see on this side. And the moment you tension that, that makes the belt change its track. So you just let the infeed keep running. So guys, we're looking at the belt tracking now. It looks great on this end. The tension is good. And you notice we're not riding up against the machine down on this end right here. This actually looks dynamite. Bob, I want to see the, um, what do you call that thing? The sawdust extractor. The sawdust extractor working. Let's see how she does. Let's see. Holy cow, that looks really cool. Alright, let me go to the other side and let's we'll see. Okay. Oh wow. So I'm gonna have to put my lid on this. It's blown and it looks like a Okay. That's pretty aggressive. It's blue uh, sawdust all over me. It yeah, blue sawdust all over me. It kind of looks like a, a carnival game or something. So <laughs> I think I think you had the right idea. If you take the, the top from one of these. Uh -huh. You know, maybe you could even take the top of one and then like put a notch here. Yeah. And just set it on when you're using it. I think you might still, some sawdust might exit, you know. But, uh -huh. Um, I wonder to blow the lid off of it though, you think? I might have to put a strap around it too. Maybe. Or you could, yeah. But, but it should keep this area pretty freaking clean for you. Sawdust that ends up on the ground, but yeah. it's going to be minimal compared to what you had before. And now I think it's easier to get back here to work on stuff too if you do want to yeah. change the bar and chain or okay. tension things and stuff. So now you don't have that whole tote in the way. Is the speed adjustable nope, on this? It's set. That's it. And then what, well, what's all this down here then? So that is uh, basically the, the pressure regulator on it. Uh huh. So it has a set pressure and um, that won't change the flow, you know, but basically it just changes the, yeah. the bypass pressure. So if something does jam this up, that's what that third hose is for, the case drain. Okay. So it'll make it so basically if this did ever get jammed up, a whole piece of firewood stuck in it, it won't destroy the motor here. All right. It'll bypass back to the tank. Okay. So let's do an overview, guys. The perfect clean conveyor belt was adjusted the rubber flappy thing was installed here I think that's the official name for that we put the washer on the saw motor and that will prevent if I throw a chain of it cutting up the oil line we put on the new belt yes and thanks for that now on a typical situation i would buy this and you would ship it to me and i would put it on myself right but this worked out great though that you were passing through yeah and and you know we were coming to do that sawdust extractor anyway so yeah the stuff that we did today really only added i don't know maybe one or two hours to what we were planning on doing uh-huh so um you know that's not normally the case obviously we can't just go every place so the point of making some of these videos and, and today especially showing how to feed this in like that yeah is to help somebody that that uh you know needs to do this stuff themselves it's really not sure it's really not that hard to do you know so. and the 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 live deck has been welded it's in synchrony now yeah and uh that i just lived with that for such such a time i don't know how you <laughs> yeah you know you just get by <laughs> with it but now we're fixed and um i got my oil too i'm gonna get these chains lubed up all right, so Bob, we, um, we, you, and Ken did a lot on the 405 today. You had a good nap, right? Yeah, boy, I'm refreshed, <laughs> and I'm ready to take on my day tomorrow now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, me too. We're going to travel a little bit more, and yeah, you you'll gotta, see me on a couple more channels too. You got a trailer full of goodies over oh, there. Yeah. That would be kind of exciting to tag along. So, All right, but well, we got to let you and Ken get going. And I want to thank you for uh, stopping here at the Woodyard. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, you are always welcome, uh, especially anytime you're up and down the interstate. Yeah, here, you well, stop. like you said, it's really easy to, to get on and off, and this Woodyard is just... I love it here. I love it here, too. <laughs>
Well, I do have some stacking if you'd like to stick around a little bit longer. Um, all right. Well, Bob, you and Ken have a uh, safe trip. Thank you. And I want to tell everyone to have a great, great day. day.